Okay, um, uh, good win. Always good to get a win. Um, again, I never take a win for granted. Uh, winning is uh, it's hard to do, so uh, we'll take it. Uh, Dave Luce, the coach at Austin P. You have your name on the court. You're a great coach. You're not a good coach. You're a great coach. So uh, that's uh, and, and and he does such a good job. Um, Austin P. Is a you know they're well coached. They got a good team, and uh, but it's good for us to get the win. There were some positives that we had the first half. Um, you know I thought we played well the first half. I thought the second half we got loosey goosey. I just thought we got unsound on some things, trying to make the triple play, the home run, not keeping things simple, and hitting singles, and just trying to make the the the, the fancy play. And we can't do that. It's not about as we talk to our team, so I talk to the team all the time about it's about us as in terms of the name on the front of the jersey. We've got to stay simple and sound. And when we do that, we're very, very effective. When we try to hit home runs and make the fancy play <clears throat> uh, or the 50-50 play where it's maybe it might get it or not, in a, in a, you know, in a two-possession game, that can cost you a game. So, uh, but the win is great. Um, um, like I said, I thought the first half was good. We got to cut down on our turnovers. We are going to, you know, when you're pressing like we pressed, you're going to have some turnovers, but we can't have as many as we had. We've got to continue to get the one more, the extra pass. I thought we're really good when we make the extra pass, the open man's the go to man. Uh, continue to have the hockey assist. I mean, we had 37 made field goals on 23 assists, but we've got to even be better than that. And, um, uh, but overall, again, like I said, it's a win. We'll take it. And uh, we'll move move on to get ready for for uh, sat for uh, Tuesday. So what'd you say to Austin? What'd you say to Austin when you brought him over and uh, sat him down there? He was struggling a little bit in the first half. What did you make well, of his debut? Well, two things. I, I I I jumped Austin when he came out of the game, and I shouldn't have done that like that. I was probably and I told Austin I shouldn't have. I I, I was because I told Austin here playing for me, you win every 50-50 ball. Say, if you don't win 50-50 balls, you can't play for me. You've got to sit. Those things are – that's very important to me. Um, and you've got to stick your nose in there and go get rebounds. Um, and, he get, and he didn't win some 50-50 balls, so I got upset at him. But the, I, I jumped him hard, and I probably shouldn't have jumped him that hard. Um, but, but I wanted him to understand, playing for me, you've got to win those, or you've got to sit. And he understood, and he understood. So – um, I love Austin. Jeff, Austin's going to be a great player. There is no question Austin's going to be a great player here. I'm just telling everybody he's going to be a great player. But this year, there's going to be highs and lows. Like when we played Baylor, he was, I mean, of anyone, he was the only guy on our team that did it. I mean, he was fantastic. And, and you saw in Christian Brothers, he, did, he had some great moves. Tonight, he just, there were some highs and lows with him, but that's going to how it's going to be throughout the year with him. So everyone's got to temper expectations. But the long term for Austin, He's got tremendous upside. His hands and the way he finishes around the hoop. Um, he's going to be a great player to watch to continue to see, prog prog you know, have the progression that he'll make in the in the maturity as we keep moving forward uh, through his career. You, you've talked about the four senior guards being the guys that have to got to lead this mm -hmm. team. What, what do you think of their performance tonight? And you well, and, and let me say this: going back to even Austin, that's why I took I jumped Nick King. I took Nick King out, and see, that's why he played three minutes the first half. I said you didn't. Uh, or I don't. Yeah, I played three the first half. I said because you didn't get 50-50 balls. You went up soft the first time you caught it. Can't do that playing for him. You got to get 50-50 balls, and you got to stick your nose in the rebound. If not, you have to sit. And and then the second half, he came in and played and and, and played with a great tenacity and intensity. So, um, so it was a good lesson for the freshmen on those guys on that. Regarding the 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 seniors, Jason, I thought. Uh, the guys, the, the, the four senior guards did a nice job that first half. I thought the, Jaron, Joe, and Michael Dixon had great energy. Chris came in and really opened the game with him making the threes. We really, those four guys were really at a high level. I felt when we had our slippage, when our team had the slippage in the second half was when those four got loosey-goosey, had, had slippage, didn't keep it simple, tried to hit the home run or the triple. And that's where we got ourselves uh, – um, you know, we didn't play the, the way that I wanted to finish the game like I wanted to, but that's a direct re that was because of the four guy, the four seniors. The four seniors got us, helped us where we needed to get, but they also didn't keep playing the way that I wanted us to play for the full 40 minutes, and that's something that we've got to continue to work on. How much, is, how much of a work in progress is the press? Because you guys gave up quite a few easy buckets there down the stretch in the second half. Yeah, well, 
the press, all, we also we forced them to 22 turnovers. I mean, we got to keep working on the press, but the press was also effective for us too. I mean, um, you know, we got a lot of good stuff out of the press as well too. We 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 I think we, you know, we we forced them into some quick shots. Um, you know, you're not going to hold a team scoreless, and when you press, you're going to give things up. There could be an easy layup here or there, and we, those are things that we have to correct. When we get when we get beat on the press. It's important that we make sure that we, we sprint back, that we have our, our zones covered up, and at least three guys in the, in the back, and then the other two need to be sprinting back um, to be able to, to uh, uh, match up. And so that's something that we've got to work on. Our back guys can't allow the basket protector allow an uncontested layup. So there are some things that we have to clean up on it. But I thought the press was also effective for us in the first half. Got us going with energy. We got steals. We got a bunch. We had like 41 total deflections on the game. Our goal is to have 40. We have 41 today. We had six three stops in a row. Uh, six different times we got three stops in a row. And part of that's the press. But we got to get better on the press too. And so I, I, I'm well aware of it. But you know, this is our only third time that we've used it against a, an opponent other than ourselves. Okay, Jaron had 10 rebounds and Chris had eight. How important is it for the guards to rebound? Everything for me is guard rebounding. And uh, if you rebound as a guard, it's much easier to play for me. You've got to be a great guard rebounder. You've got to stick your nose in there and come up with guard rebounds. That's a big thing. Josh, you know, people have circled this next game now. They've been talking about it since the summer. There's been opportunities over the last few years of big – you know, preseason, you know, before conference games. This is another opportunity. Just talk about this matchup now with number eight, Oklahoma State. Yeah, Oklahoma State's a great team. I mean, I've never played there in Stillwater. In fact, Ren Baker, um, who coached with uh, Eddie Sutton, and Ren Baker's the deputy athletic director, second man in charge behind Tom Bowen, and uh, and he and he's oversees men's basketball. So any direct question regarding what the atmosphere is like, you can ask Ren, but he tells me that it's one of the hardest places to play in college basketball. I've had other people tell me that as well, too, um, that it's you know one of the hardest places to play in all of college basketball. Maybe the hardest, which is great. And it's great for us. It's a great atmosphere. We, we're excited for that opportunity and that challenge because we understand when we go into the American and who we're playing in the American on the road, that this this game will help us for the long haul, and we understand that. So, uh, um, hey, but we're I love our team. We're going in there to win the game. We know we we know how good Oklahoma State is. We know how uh, how good their players are. Their talent. Travis Ford is an, a tremendous coach, and uh, we know we're going to have to play our A game. Um, but again, it's the next game on the schedule. It is not the national championship. And I know you're smiling, Mike, and you're thinking, no, wait, wait, let me finish. Let me fin let me let me finish. Every game in my world is a big game. I've never coached in a game that didn't mean something to me. And I'm telling you, I, all day today, if you, if I, in my insides, were just eating at me all day long. So it doesn't matter if it's this game, Christian Brothers. I'll feel the same way. Every game, to me, is is important to me. That's it's, that's how important it is. That being said, also, it's one thing in the American, the conference. You're going to have so many opportunities, you know, that to to be able to play high level games. And you look at our non conference schedule. We have so many opportunities. Not just this isn't like where maybe last year where you could say, hey, you've got these two or three, and then otherwise you're, that's it until until the NCAA tournament. I mean, here you got you look at our schedule. We've got a collection of them. So for us, what we can't do is go high and low. High. We've got to stay just emotionally positive the entire year. But we're excited for Tuesday. I mean, look at the Champions Classic on anyone who watched that on uh, Tuesday night. The whole time they were, you know, talking about the game on uh, our game on the following Tuesday. You know, they were promoting it, saying just how great of a game it's going to be. So we're we're excited. It's going to be fun. Uh, Shaq, Dom, and Austin had. Ten rebounds combined, or what Jaron had by himself. How concerned are you? About that? Well, well, we I got on at halftime. In the halftime, we only had three between those guys, and uh, so now I love the fact that our guard rebounding was good. Um, so that helps. But we're going to have to have we got to be a better rebounding team, and that's why for us to be the team that we want to be, we've got to be a really good guard rebounding team. And so we've got to have the rebounds from our guards, but we've got to continue to have. Our bigs be a good re good rebounders as well, but I, that's a key for us is to be a. Uh, we've got to be a really good defensive and offensive rebounding team, especially with us pressing. How much will that dictate who gets the minutes in terms of the front line? I, I, I'm all you know. I'm, I'm a feel guy, so I'll coach on feel. And if guys are producing, I'm going to play them. You know, and, I, and look, I played nine guys tonight, double digit minutes. That might not be always how it is. I mean, you know, we didn't have Karan Iverson. 
Uh, regarding Markel Crawford, I didn't play him. So I would, uh, um, you know, if you ask me today, you know, I, I, I didn't play him so we could preserve the red shirt. I need to meet with him and the doctors and um, the trainer and decide what we're going to do. I'm going to leave it up to Markel. But um, because I want to make sure how he feels mentally and physically and then make a decision from there. But uh, obviously, by him sitting out, it's preserved his red shirt. And then we'll have Karan back for the for the uh, Oklahoma State game. So you're looking at 10 guys if I don't play Markel that game. So how we do the minutes, it'll just be, you know, we're trying to win the game. It'll just be depending on the feel and the flow of the game. Okay, and then how do you feel about uh, the free throw shooting from the night? Well, I thought we, we were fine at the beginning, but but Damian, we can't be one of four for Damian. I was upset at Jaron for missing the front end of, you know, one of one, or he, I don't know, he was one of two or something, I don't know. But, but you know, we, gotta, we, we can't be 17 of 24. We need to be about 73%, 74%. That's, that's where we need to be at. We were at 71% today. We need about 74. But Damian Wilson and Jaron Johnson are going to make their free throws. They're perimeter players. When did you start watching film on Oklahoma State? Have not watched it. Nothing? Nothing. Um, I will start watching tomorrow morning. And in fact, in my entire career as a head coach, I have never gone in front of a, in front of a game ever in my history of my, of my career. And I probably never will. I just, it's hard for me. I'm very task-oriented, Gary. So I'm like one game at a time, and I don't ever, for me, you know, if I preach to our guys about taking one game at a time and focus on the opponent at hand, then I got to do the same thing. So, uh, um, so I'll start focusing on it tomorrow. But our assistants, obviously, when we do the scout, guys are, you know, they they mix it up. So our our assistant, uh, like Aki Collins, did the scout tonight. Thought he did a great job. Uh, Robert Kirby will have Oklahoma State, so he's already started on that, and we go from there. You touched on it a little bit earlier, but how proud were you of Nick King with the way he responded in the second half after you know, having zero points and zero rebounds? Yeah, second half, Grant, uh, Grant, he was very good. Nick was really good. And um, um, first half, he didn't, get, he didn't win 50-50 balls. Him or Austin didn't win them, and that's why they both had a sit. Second half, Nick was effective because he played hard and he got the 50-50 ball. And uh, he had zero rebounds first half. He had five the second. Josh, what did you think of the um – the game as a whole with the new rules or at least the enforcement of the rules with the hand checking going and all that stuff? I thought it was a well-officiated game. Um, I thought those three were very, very good. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a very well-officiated game. I thought both teams played it well, and it was, it was well-officiated. Well um, so, yeah, I had no issues on it. Okay, thanks, everybody. Thank